Hey, in this session, number nine, we're talking about a spiritual leader or spiritual leadership, uh, especially within the local church, but especially we're going to focus on the, the leader in public life. Uh, you know, there's um, <laughs> funny, uh, not funny kind of ha-ha, I don't know, but you know, there's times that we're called upon, in, if we're clergy, uh, to do public things. Speak at a graduation. I do that a lot, especially college graduations, but sometimes in a high school or even a elementary school. Uh, and there's certain things that people want uh, that they don't want. You know, they, in most cases, they, they certainly expect that as a clergy, you're going to pray, but don't pray in the name of Jesus. You know, if you're, if you're of a different faith, you can use that faith name all you want. Just don't use the name of Jesus. Well, you know, those are things that, you know, you're going to have to deal with and negotiate, etc. Whether or not you're willing to pray in that way or thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Amen. You know, or if you're going to actually go for it and say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords. Anyway. So, but, you know, public life is important. Uh, we're called upon many times to represent uh, not just our own local congregation, but in some cases to represent the church within the locality. This is often seen when we're called upon for our opinion of things. And again, I, I believe that as a spiritual leader, I mean, we have opinions like anybody else has. And they might be learned opinions and they might just be, you know, opinions. <laughs> and we all have both. But hopefully, if you're going to give an opinion, you're going to first think about what you're going to say and not just represent a po political persuasion of sorts, but represent what the king and the kingdom of God would say about whatever it is that you're addressing within a public arena. I mean, really, all that we do, our Facebook page, our, our promotional material, it is all public. It can get into the public arena, and we need to be careful Again, what we say, how we say it, because people are watching. Now, we know that. And so if you're in the public arena, which you will be if you're a leader, you need to recognize that you are representing Christ. So at all times, you want to be gracious. Now, gracious doesn't mean that you're a wimp. Gracious means you're, you want to bring the favor of God and you want to show favor be gracious toward those that have invited you uh, to be a part of some public event. And at the same time, you want to be full of truth. Jesus is the truth. Jesus was full of grace and truth. And when we're especially in the public arena, we also need to be full of grace and truth. Now, Jesus was often, the Bible says, you know, wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. Uh, Jesus often answered questions with questions that really confounded, you know, religious leaders, etc. So, but so we want to use wisdom, but we need grace, we need truth, but especially I think we need wisdom when we're in the public arena. Um, the majority of ministry, of course, is done behind closed doors, that is in the life of the church. But nowadays, more and more congregations, because of the pandemic, etc., need to be both internal, but also it's seen externally. Everything that we talk about pretty much nowadays is on the internet somewhere. And so again, I think it's, it's grace, it's truth, it's wisdom. Now, I don't think we have to hold back on what scripture says about things. I mean, if you're preaching or teaching on a topic that's just kind of a, you know, it's just time. We're talking about marriage and family. And when you get to that, you know, you, you make the statement that marriage is between a man and a woman. Oh, that's horrible. How can you say that? Yeah, that's so judgmental. No, that's just Bible. But reference the Bible when you make the statement so it's not just your opinion, but it's clearly simply I'm sharing what the Word of God says. That's just called wisdom. And again, I think if you're asked us to officiate a public wedding of a of a couple that are not exactly, um, how would you say it, uh, you know, maybe would be shined upon by the average Christian community, well, you might want to say, you know, thanks for the opportunity, but, but no thanks. My convictions don't allow me to do that. So we have to be careful, especially in the public arena, because we remember at all times we represent Christ. Now we got 
one more major session we're going to do, which will be number 10. And we're going to talk a little bit about the pitfalls and the passions of leadership in the local church.